What is going on, everybody? This is Seabass from Rockin' with Seabass, and holy cow, there's so much to talk about. So much. Uh, last week, I had an interview with the uh, legendary Robert Berry, who played with Keith Emerson and Carl Palmer. It's a great interview, great guy. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, go check it out. It's on YouTube, actually. It's on my channel. It's called the Rockin' with Seabass channel, episode six. We also uh, uh, have a, a big concert coming up May 29th at Arena Rock Show. They will be at JD Legends along with Aces High. Now, today, we're going to be getting ready to interview um, a legendary a legendary bass player from a band known as Heart, who is waving at me right now. His name is Steve Fawson. How are you doing, good sir? Very well, thank you. Hey, wh where are you, man? <laughs> I'm in. Uh, I'm actually on the space station in outer space. Space station. In the world. What, what what kind of world are you gonna go search for, man? <laughs> <laughs> actually, I uh, I live near Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. Oh wow, that wow, that's very far away. I'm I'm, I'm actually heading to Utah after this, so I could be a little closer then. But I'm actually from Ohio. We're going to play in Utah and Ohio coming up. Oh, really? When's that at? Well, I don't have the calendar right in front of me, but I believe uh, the middle of June is Utah, and at the end of June is uh, is uh, Ohio. However, it could be July. Could Do you want be me July. to look it up for sure? Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead, man. I would, I'd like to know because, you know, we haven't been to concerts for so long. Okay, well, I'm, I'm putting up my calendar, so I'm going to lose you for a second. Okay, so May, June, July. Okay, so it's... Uh, okay, the 10th is South Jordan, Utah, Utah of July. Oh. And the 30th is Von... Van Wert, Ohio. Oh, oh yes. At the well, Wiz, Wiswanger PA. Oh, wow. Oh, man. I'm going to try to go to that. Um, huge Heart fan. And I've actually checked out you know, your current band that you're in right now, Heart the Heart. Heart by Heart. Oh, heart by Heart. Thank you for correction there. <laughs> Tell me something about Heart by Heart. How did you guys, like, came to be? I know you and then, um, you know, Michael DeRozier from you know, The Drummer. Uh, how did you guys like form? Yes, yeah, drummer from Heart and the co-writer of Barracuda. Right. Um, <laughs> I just gotta I gotta give him a plug, you know. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Summer, our lead singer, and I, uh, we met back in two thousand eight, and we kind of hung out throughout the uh, spring and summer and fall, and then by the winter we created a relationship uh, and we started hanging out quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. And she's a singer and I'm a bass player. So we would sit around and I would play bass and she would sing. And we did heart songs and we did Alice and Krauss songs and, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then people would hear us hear about it. And then we'd play dinner parties. And, and then we got, after a while we got asked to do, you know, bistros and jam nights and, stuff like that. And then um, we got a call from a guy in Anchorage, Alaska that wanted us to open up for Dwight Yoakam. And we said, sure, but we thought a, a duo was a little light. So we asked Mike DeRozier and Randy Hansen. Randy Hansen is a Hendrix artist, a guitar mm -hmm. player that we know. And uh, they both agreed to join us. And so we learned a set of the heart material. We got it all set to go. And then Dwight uh, decided not to go to Alaska for some reason. But, however, we had a band. So uh, mm -hmm. later on that uh, fall in 2010, um, uh, some friends of ours had a benefit for the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Awareness, and we raised a lot of money with them, and that was our first gig. And at this gig was, uh, you know, some people that we knew, and they told booking agents about us, and the booking agents started booking us. And then we got a website, and then people from all over the country could check into our website, and one thing led to another, and pretty soon we're playing all over America. Huh. But I got to say, man, I mean, the, the entire band is really good, really tight. Um, you know, I, listen, I watched a lot of the live stuff that you guys done. Um, your guitar player, uh, Lizzie, she is super, super good. 
uh, how did you guys find her? Well, we, uh, before she joined the band, we were doing a show at a, a local uh, casino and her band, excuse me, I just had some pop. It's all good. <laughs> like burp or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, and she, uh, she opened up for us in her band. And then during the set, she was right on the stage and you could, she was really, she's really a big heart fan. So she was, she knew all the songs and she was singing along and having a good time. And then we found out through the same booking agent that had been booking us all over the place that she was interested in auditioning for the band. So we gave her an audition and of course she passed <laughs> and we auditioned like on a Monday or Tuesday. And by the weekend we were playing a gig and she was I mean, it was that fast. She, she joined the band. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've had a really good relationship with her. And we, you know, we really respect her. And so we've uh, we've grown closer and closer over the years. And she's a very valuable, valued friend and member of the band. Mm -hmm. And I also got to say, you know, the singer and uh, forgive me if I don't say this right, because I've been practicing it all day. Uh, Sumar Mesa, is that how you say your name? <laughs> Actually, she pronounces her name Summer. Like oh, season. Summer. Okay. Yeah, uh, and if she hears you saying it, saying it different, she'll correct you. Oh, well, <laughs> good to know that she's not not around. <laughs> but so, but she she's a really good vo vocalist, like very very talented. Every time I close my eyes, I feel like she was Ann Wilson at times. Did well, she, yeah, was she does she have a similar uh, timber and delivery as as Anne. Um, she, they're they're totally different singers though, because I've worked with both of them. But mm -hmm. um, Summer does a great job at what she does. I mean, obviously Anne is one of the premier vocalists that have ever lived, basically. And uh, but you know, Summer does a great job, and in in our band, we try to reproduce and faithfully do the songs at you know, as they were recorded and, and written and everything. So someone does a great job at that. Mm -hmm. She does. And yeah, I, I give her props to her. She does a great job of what she does. Yeah. yeah and she's also, she's one, my wife too, you know? Oh yeah. That's it. <laughs> Congratulations. So by the way. Too, I can't say too, too much about her, but <laughs> in the negative, but I can certainly say positive stinks. About her. Right. Uh, and then uh, of course, you know, your other guitar player, uh, Chad Quiz, um, he has some cool chops as well. Uh, yeah. How did you guys meet him? Yeah, he was uh, actually a friend of Lizzie's. And uh, he, at the time that we were, before he joined the band, he was living in Los Angeles. And then he, we heard that he moved back. And we still had Randy Hansen um, playing guitar with us. But he's, you know, like I said, he's a Hendrix artist. So he had, he had a lot of obligations in his, uh, for his Hendrix band to fulfill. So we were having a hard time, you know, making things work, you know, so we could play and he could play at the same time, or, you know, different places and together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we, we had Chad, Chad sub for us and we thought, wow, this guy's really good. And, and he's great to tour with. He's a, he's a fun guy to, to be around. And uh, we just asked him if he want to be the permanent guitar player. And he said, yes. And we're, you know, our, our band came together very organically and I'm glad it did. And uh, that's the way bands should come together, mm -hmm. but uh, we've, we're really having a great time. And now that uh, the uh, COVID thing is uh, kind of um, easing up a bit, we're starting, the phone's starting to ring. We're starting to get gigs. And, you know, like I said, we're playing in Utah and, and Ohio and, and right before Ohio, we're going to be in Wisconsin too. So, oh wow, um, it's really fun. And then we have some other shows that I can't mention right now because oh, they're yeah. not solid. But uh, we have some really <laughs> good shows coming up. You know, um, I noticed you guys, uh, you know, play a lot of deep cuts from from Heart. You know, like Heartless and all that. But I've also noticed you played a few songs um, from like the '80s era, from like you know Dreams and all that. That, does yeah. that feel weird that you you play that because you had you, you you left around like 82 from heart yes i did yes well you know music is music and when you're a musician 
you can play, you know, uh, you can play music and, you know, I can certainly uh, play the parts that, that the other bass players that came after me have played on their, you know, their contribution. And I, you know, I don't feel weird at all. I just feel like music is music and mm -hmm. people love, you know, the eighties and they love the era that I was in too. So you can't really, uh, and there's a different parts of the country where the eighties material is more popular and was bigger than the seventies. Oh yeah. So, and, and around the world too. So, um, you know, it behooved us to be able to play it. And, and uh, you know, we can do that. And <clears throat> I know that Ann and Nancy don't do very many things from the, the 80s era, um, the 80s and later 80s era. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we enjoy doing it. And, I mean, it's it's music and it's fun right. and it's art and people like it. And we're there to... What we're we're there to do to be represent the music of heart, and you know you can't represent the music of heart without doing some of the stuff from the eighties. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree with you on that. And I also like to know what is your favorite heart song to play. Well, um, I really love Magic Man. Mm -hmm. I love Crazy on You. Um, Mr. All Wind is probably one of the band favorites to play because it's such a powerful um, song that, that has, you know, all kinds of different uh, intensities going on in the same song. But, you know, I got to say Magic Man because Magic Man was number one was the first song that I played on, on Dreamboat Annie. And then it was the first song that I ever heard played on the radio when I was, you know, back in the day. And it's uh, also, it's one of the biggest testing radio songs in the history of test, you know, radio testing, which means that once the song comes on, people don't change the dial. They listen to the whole song. <laughs> and uh, it usually passes because it's a classic. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when we were making Dreamboat Annie, our, our producer, Mike Flicker, mm -hmm. his favorite saying was, hey, um, I want you, you're going to want to play this right because you're going to be listening to it for the rest of your life. And I thought, well, that'd be nice, but I had no idea that it would actually come true. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking of the that era of Dreamboat Annie, you know, before you guys started, you know, you guys originally uh, had the band name uh, White Heart, and then you guys changed it to just Heart. Yeah, what, we just shorted Heart. Oh, yeah. well, what made you guys change the name? Well, when uh, Roger Fisher and I were in high school, we started a band and we called it the army. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some, <clears throat> you know, we lived near uh, uh, Fort Lewis. So when we, they, and they want us to play down at Fort Lewis and, and at bars and clubs near Fort Lewis, but we were called the army and that kind of put some people off. So we, um, there was a band out called Steppenwolf that was named after a um, novelette or a novel. Mm, good band. And uh, Whiteheart was, Tales of the Whiteheart was, was also a novelette. So we thought, well, mm, that's kind of cool. So we called ourselves Whiteheart. And then we, we would go around and people would go, well, what's a Whiteheart? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's a Whiteheart? And, you know, and we couldn't really explain it. So uh, a year after being Whiteheart, we uh, shortened it to Heart. And uh, that was 1969. Mm -hmm. And then we went through uh, different members and, and uh, different eras of Heart until we met uh, Anne. We met Anne in the summer of 1971. Mm -hmm when we put an ad in a local paper for a lead singer and she answered it. And uh, we got together and we liked each other's, you know, playing. So we passed each other's auditions and, and then we started uh, a club band and that club band, we, we didn't want to call it heart because it wasn't really heart per se, but we called it Hocus Pocus to make, you know, as a club band. And oh, so wow. we, we toured around, uh, 
Washington, Idaho, Montana, Oregon uh, for from like say September to December and uh, made, you know, we made enough money to pay off our debts and stuff that had accumulated when we, you know, that's why we had to get <laughs> a new, new band called Hocus Pocus because art had kind of run its course for a little while and we were kind of out of money. So we had that band with Ann. And then so Roger, Ann and I just, you know, we really admired each other's, um, you know, drive, ambition, you know, dedication to, to uh, what we were doing. And uh, so we stuck together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you guys stuck together for a long time. And then, you know, when you guys made, you know, Dreamboat Annie, and you guys finally got the success you deserved. But I kind of want to know, is there any other like cool stories that you remember from that time when you guys were with the original group? Well, um, what, so what happened was uh, Roger and I had been friends since we were in junior high school. Mm -hmm. And Roger's older brother, uh, Mike, um, was two years ahead of us. And when he when he was down here uh, in the Seattle area, before he moved to Canada, he was like our manager, uh, sound person, you know, that kind of role he f filled. And then he, uh, to, during the Vietnam War, he didn't agree with the war, so he went to Canada. So, um, but during the Hocus Pocus time, Ann and Mike met and, they fell in love. So in order to, and because there was no amnesty at that time, we, we decided that we would emigrate to uh, Canada. And um, in the, the end of 1971, the beginning of 1972, we all emigrated to Canada and we were, and Roger, Ann and I were accepted as, as landed immigrants into uh, Canada. And that's when we, put together um, a, you know, a, a set of cover music to play clubs and all that kind of stuff. And that's when we changed the name back to Heart. Mm -hmm. And we had a couple of Canadian mu musicians with us and it, and it seemed like within six, eight months, we were one of the top bands in the Vancouver area. And then from that, we branched out and we were able to tour around you know, British Columbia, Alberta, and uh, and during that time, uh, Mike Flicker, who had also emigrated to Canada from, but he emigrated from, and we all emigrated from Seattle area because that's where we live. Mike Flicker and Howard Lease emigrated from the Los Angeles area, and they happened to, you know, kind of mirror the timing as far as when they got up there and, and got you know got started and everything, and they. Um, so Mike was a producer, Howard was a studio musician and they, um, Mike kind of just discovered us and, and had us in the studio for a demo and decided that they would, um, they wanted us to record a, an album, album. And, uh, we did, and that was Dreamboat Annie. Mm -hmm. And during the recording of Dreamboat Annie is when Howard did, uh, you know, what studio musicians do, they put their parts on and then they were really good parts and we thought, well, what the heck, uh, why don't we have Howard join the band? And he said, sure. And, and that was during that time that we also met uh, and asked Mike DeRocher to join the band. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really nice story right there. I like that. And then, you know, with Dreamboat Annie, you guys tried coming out with the other album magazine, but that had a lot of setbacks. What, what happened with that? Well, we were out uh, promoting Dreamboat Annie in the summer, uh, spring and summer of uh, 76. And when we would, we'd go out for a few weeks, we'd come back for a couple of days and then we'd go in the studio and, you know, we were recording the tracks for magazine. And I think we recorded magazine, um, Heartless, Devil, Delight, um, and a couple other songs. And, <clears throat> and then, uh, there was some kind of, uh, you know, Dreamboat Annie was selling really well, but the record company Mushroom was not um, 
tallying up the, the correct amount of money that they that was owed to the band. Mm. And they were kind of, uh, I don't know what, what, what exactly what was going on because I was just a musician and managers and producers and stuff were taking care of all that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, it ended up that we, um, they were very unhappy with not getting paid. So we left and uh, signed with Columbia Records and <clears throat> so there was all these tracks that were still in the vaults up at uh, Canby Studio, which is Mushroom Records. Mm -hmm. So they mixed their versions of them and put some uh, live material that we had recorded at uh, um, the Aquarius Tavern here in Seattle mm. and made an album. And so we didn't like it. So we gave them a cease and desist order and they had to cease and desist with the caveat that we get to remix the album and do it the way we wanted to do it mm -hmm. as much as possible without you know, recording new material to put on it. And we, and while we were doing, while that was going on, we recorded Little Queen, the album. And so we rec Little Queen was actually album number two. And then when Little Queen, after Little Queen got released and was doing its thing, we went in and finished up the magazine in our own way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, magazine is one of my favorite albums uh, right next to Dreamboat Annie. So I'm glad that it finally came out around that time to get the success that it deserves. <laughs> and look at me, I'm born from 97. So I don't know why I'm saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was, it's, an, it's got some really nice songs. It's got a good feel. The, the, uh, the tunes that we recorded in between, you know, the touring with for Dreamboat Annie was, had a lot of spirit and, we were very confident and we felt really good about what we were mm -hmm. doing. So it was good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go a little further here around, around uh, 88. Um, I actually discovered this today and I just kind of want your story of this. You were in a band called alias. Yes. Um, how did that come to be? Because it has uh, you, Steve Fisher, Mike DeRozier, uh, I can't remember the other ones. Uh, Marcy, I think that's the thing. It was uh, Roger Fisher, Mike DeRozier, um, Steve DeMarkey. Yeah, Steve DeMarkey. Thank you. <laughs> and Freddie Kirchie. Yeah. And Freddie and Steve were, they're from Toronto, Canada. And they had a band called Sheriff. Yep. That had a big hit called uh, When I'm With You. And EMI up there, uh, was having them record, a, you know, wanted them to record another album. And they were managed by, um, I can't remember his name right now, but anyway, a, a management company out of LA. And they had also managed Rick, Richard Marks at the time. And, and Mike had been playing with Richard Marks, but that he kind of got out of that. And then they, the management company said, well, let's see what we can do. And they asked uh, Roger, Mike and I to um, join up with Freddie and Steve. And, and that's how we joined Alias. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, so many good songs that you know, I've listened to. I listened to a little bit of the uh, first album. And one song that you probably know is Haunted Heart uh, with the music video. Yeah. How did you guys come up with that music video? <laughs> you know, <laughs> back in those days, you had there was so many you know everybody was doing videos so right just, you know there's all kinds of cameramen around and people and lights and action and you know we just did it yeah i liked it it was a good video i mean the guy was you know sitting there looking at you guys from the screen and he's like what and then it ends and i'm just like that was nice <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the, it, we had the full backing of emi which is uh you know a big record company in uh, in Europe and uh, Canada, and you know it, it was a fun project. We did a lot of very nice, cool things. We toured around quite a bit with that band. We met a lot of neat people, and mm -hmm. uh, you know we played the Johnny Carson show twice: once with Johnny Carson and once with Jay Leno. Huh, nice. Yeah, so I mean, we did a lot of very cool, fun things, and it was a good experience. Uh, do, you, do you have a favorite particular song from that time uh, when you were in that band? Well, um, 
you know, Haunted Heart was, you know, I, I love that song. And then, uh, I can't remember the name of the other one. Um, you could grab the CD. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it was really fun. It was, you know, but it ended kind of on a sour note, which I don't really want to get into, but mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it was it was good and you know freddie and steve are there freddie is a great singer steve's a great guitar player the people at the record company were very generous with mike and roger and i so it was it was nice it was, it was a good experience all all around yeah well it's a good man and i i noticed that you, um the drummer uh, michael derosier he he seems to follow you around a lot he's he was with you with El elias heart now he's with you again with heart by heart and i'm like man he's He's everywhere. Well, the thing that is, so when when uh, getting back to to the seventies, um, Heart at the time was a very very popular uh, club band, and back then cl club bands would we'd pull in on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, and then you'd play, you know, through the weekend, and sometimes two weeks in a row you'd do the same thing. And uh, so we were looking for a new drummer, and. Uh, we the word was out and we heard about Mike and Mike heard about us so and then Mike came to see us at the uh, Aquarius that I was talking about earlier where we we did that live recording for magazine the live stuff from magazine comes from there and Mike and I had a big long talk about our philosophies philosophies about you know drummers and bass players and you know how they work together and fit together and stuff and we just hit it off I don't know and uh, it's for for me being a bass player and having a mike who is one of the most competent musicians drummers that you'll ever find anywhere um it's just been a, a joy for me because uh you know bass players like to uh you know like to get in the pocket and if the drum drummer is not making a pocket then it's hard to be in the pocket if you know mm. what i mean <laughs> i, I kind of see what you're trying to say there. <laughs> So I mean, it's a, I don't know. We just play together well. We get along. Um, we understand each other, and I don't know. We just and Got that. You know, whatever happens. I mean, our band is uh, mostly a democracy. I mean, summer night we kind of run things, but at the same time we we throw things by um, Mike and and Lizzie. And figure, you know, and we get their consensus, and then we move forward on whatever we want to do. And yeah. I think that's what all bands should be like, you know, to have their, you know, decisions and kind of you know work together like that. Yeah, yeah, that what a concept, huh? Yeah, I know, right? It would work. I got a, I, I got a few uh, friends that are in local bands that try to do the same thing, and it works out really well. So I'm always wondering, like, you know, why can't bands be like that? Well, you know, some some bands, uh, the the I don't know, the leader th just thinks he's the only smart one in the band. Or, you know, who knows? I don't know. But I, you know, I I think I'm smart. I think Summer's smart, and I think Mike is smart, and I think Lizzie's smart, and so we we you know, I think four brains is a better decision than one brain. You know. That's the way I look at it. And and in the early days, that's how hard it was, too. Mm -hmm. And the more it, we got away from being a group effort to being, you know, a few people calling all the shots, then it seems like the group effort, the success went up. When a couple people started calling all the shots, the success went the other way, yep. <laughs> in my opinion. Well, we all have our opinions, right? <laughs> and of course, you know, throughout the years of 2013, you were inducted into the Hall of Fame alongside with all the original members of Heart, and you reunited with them for a bit. What was that like for you to, you know, perform with with them, oh, all, it's, all, it, all the original members? Oh, it was a thrill. It was, it was a big thrill. And the rehearsal was great. I mean, we had a private rehearsal the day before the show, and, you know, we were told um, you can't bring anybody. It's going to be real private and everything. So Howard and Mike and Roger and I, we just came, it's the four of us. Well, Anne shows up with her entourage 
Nancy shows up with her entourage and they got their dogs and everything. And so like, we're going like, what? I thought it was private. <laughs> Cause I would have loved to bring, you know, summer along, but it, it didn't happen. It did not happen. But anyway, the first rehearsal that we did of crazy on you, you could have recorded it, put it, you know, tied it up with a, bin, a, a ribbon and that would have been it. Cause it was, it was like riding a bike. We just, Bam, it was done. It's like you guys never left. Yeah. And we so we played it like three or four times and everybody said, we got it. You know, and then <laughs> um, so we get on, you know, you, you go to the ceremony and the, you know, the ceremony was <laughs> it, it, it was long, you know, there's I mean, it, it, when you see the HBO show, it doesn't depict how long it was because people some of the people gave speeches that were very long. Mm. Very long, very, you know, very long. And I can't, I couldn't tell you hardly anything that they said at this time. <laughs> well, I mean, I only watched half of the speech. I mean, I was sitting there looking, it's like, oh, you guys are in the Hall of Fame. Let me see that. <laughs> so we had a bet going. One person, I won't name it, who gave a super, super, super long speech. And he was before um, Hart. And we had a bet going, like, uh, how much are they going to edit out? And they edited out about 99.9% .9 of it. Uh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's 99% of the speech. That's 3% of the speech still there. Yep. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and, you know, with you guys doing that little reunion, have you guys ever thought of doing like a full reunion with Ann and Nancy? Well, you know, I mean, I think it would, it would work. It would be great. It would be a fantastic, um, display of of uh, wonderfulness in my opinion mm -hmm. however um i just i don't think it, it will happen i just don't i mean we've talked about it a few i've brought it up a few times other people have brought it up a few times and we can't seem to get any traction because um Anna and nancy just think that, that the whole thing revolves around them and that you know and that even if there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of fans that would like to see the original band, they, they don't see it that way. So, but well, it, you know, it's what you I'll get. never say never. Cause I mean, it could happen, but I doubt it. Right. But it's what you get, right? It, you get what you get and you know, you, that's what you have to accept. I would say. Yeah. And, you know, and to tell you the truth, uh, Mike and I could probably pull it off. Oh yeah, uh, you guys are pulling it off well with the with you know the band you're in now. And Heart by Heart is an amazing, amazing group. Yeah, yeah, we 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 uh, we love Lizzie, we love Chad, and uh, that's not to say we don't love uh, Ann and Nancy and Howard too, because Howard is a fantastic musician, Nancy's a fantastic musician, Ann's a over the top great singer and, mm -hmm. and uh, performer. And, oh, yeah. you know, it's just, it would be so cool though to do not, if, if it was just a few dates to, right. do, to get back together and, and put on a full show beyond that, beyond stage for a good, you know, hour, hour and a half and uh, really lay it down like we used to. You know, I'd definitely like to see, uh, summer and her and you know and you know, do a little duet i think that would be cool <laughs> yeah that would it'd be nice uh, i'm you know I, I can't really it'd be nice <laughs> yeah it's all good you can't can't go into full detail on that but, yeah i can't really you know i'm not gonna that's that's like the hot burner i'm not touching that one <laughs> right but uh, and then I have, and I guess, you know, here's the one thing that I like to ask, because again, I told you, I know a few local musicians here in my town. What advice would you give them if they were wanting to, uh, you know, make it in the music business? Well, you know, every band, every musician, every singer, every, everybody out there, their story to make it big is different. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, with us, it was working very hard, working hard, keeping your eyes focused on the prize and 
you can't think you're a rock star before you're a rock star. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I. So you have to, you, there's, you, you got to put the work in, you got to put the work in and, you know, heart by heart back before the COVID, I mean, we would get together and rehearse once or twice a week, regardless of what we were mm -hmm. doing. And it pays off because you, those songs just get ingrained in your, in your, in your soul and your mind and, and, and your psyche and everything. And once it's, it's in there so deep, then to express that, that what the song expresses is a lot easier than if you just casually, I mean, there's plenty of musicians that can go out there, have a, you know, five, six tequilas, a couple beers and, you know, have a good time and everybody loves it. But that's, that's not my style. And that's not heart by heart style. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't um, heart style back in the day either. We, we knew we had jobs to do and we, you know, I mean, you hate to think of your career and your being a musician as a job, but it's, you do have kind of an obligation to get on stage and, you know, not be high or out of <laughs> it or distracted or whatever. Right. You've got, you know, you're up there to, and people are paying you a lot of money to, pay attention and be good. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, just one, one last question here, um, because I noticed you guys, you know, play deep cuts in, in heart by heart. Um, what, what's the best deep cut in your opinion? Like the one that you like to play? Well, I really love to play soul of the sea. That's a good one. Yeah. And for a lot of different reasons, but, uh, and we, what we do with the, a lot of the deep cuts is we make a medley out of them. So we, you know, we don't have to play the whole song. We put, we play enough of the song so everybody knows that we are paying, you know, homage to that song. And then we, we do another song that we really like. And I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a good way to do it. And, and, you know, to get, like I, we saw Burt Bacharach a couple years ago mm -hmm. and he did the same thing. He's got so many hits that if, if he didn't make a medley, you'd only hear like two songs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got so many of them. So I, and hearts kind of like that too. We have a lot of songs that people know and love and you have to hit, you know, you have to do, you know, magic man, crazy on you, Barracuda, you know, straight on dog and butterfly. You got to hit all the highlights, but then, People love the the, the uh, lesser known songs too. Mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed the lesser known songs every time I hear an album. So it's always something yeah. cool to, to dig in. Yeah, yeah. the The whole album thing though was more of a phenomena of when when I was younger, because now the industry is more song based, it's individual song based. So, mm -hmm. and then also a fan here agreed with you on something here. She says, excellent mindset. It needs to be a group effort. Everyone stay humble and bring success to all. Exactly. Jody Ann Johnson. Yeah, she's a big <laughs> fan of yours. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jody. But anyway, man, it, it was a really good good honor to talk to you and get to learn more about the band yeah. and how everything is. Well, it's and, good to talk to you too, Sebastian. And I, I really do hope to see you in Ohio. Cause I would love to see you guys, guys. Well, uh, drop me, let's see. I have your email, so I will give you the, the details and, uh, you know, we can, I, I'm pretty sure it's an outdoor show. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, I, I would need to put you on a guest list, but maybe, uh, you can come back and meet the rest of the band after the show or before the show or whatever. Yeah. I'd Multiple. be so honored. Yeah. I'd be, be very great. honored. Yeah, we're and you know, heart by heart is we're not we don't charge for meet and greets. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're going to have meet and greets with the with this COVID thing. We, who knows what's you know, we're all vaccinated by the right. way, but at the same time, um, people you know, we don't want to put ourselves at risk for you know to sign an autograph basically, right? But uh, so we could, if people are interested enough, we could sign stuff backstage and then they could we could someone else could hand it to them or whatever. Mm -hmm. but uh yeah i mean we we never charge for meet and greets and you know meet and greet is we love meeting people as well as people love meeting us i'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure i think that's the way meet and greet should be <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too 
yeah. but you know, you got to pay that extra money, but I would be, I'd be very honored to meet you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you've got my email obviously. So mm -hmm. I will, uh, we'll be in touch and I'll give you the particulars and maybe you could come back and have a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I, I work at Wendy's too. You know, I can give you all free sandwiches. Hmm? You work at Wendy's? Yeah. Why not? Oh. <laughs> all right. I love hamburgers. Okay, then. Free hamburgers on me. I'll let my mother know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh. Thank you, man. It was a great honor. Thank you, Take Sebastian. It was great talking to you too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take care and keep rocking, man. All right. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Steve Fawson from Heart by Heart and Heart. Take care and keep on rocking.